Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I'm going to be talking about grains and how I store them. Now I've talked in quite a few videos about how I like to soak my grains before grinding them up for flour. And so I have a couple of different videos out. One shows how I do it in the winter time as far as drying goes, and another in the summertime. So I'll link to one of those right up here. I'll probably link to the most recent one. And in that you should see a link to the first one. I think the first one would be showing how I dry them in the winter time on the wood stove. But the process of soaking is the same. So right here I have some grain soaking. And this is soft white and hard white wheat berries. And they're organic. And you can look in there. You can see there's some differences. And the plumper ones that you see in there are the soft white wheat berries. Now when it comes to making my bread, I like to mix the two together because it makes a good all-purpose flour. But another wheat berry I like to use that I tend to forget that I even have is my spelt berry. And there's very little difference in appearance between the spelt berries and the hard white wheat berries. Now if I had red wheat, you'd be able to tell the difference because it's a lot darker than the white wheat, thus the name. But uh, we don't really care for the red wheat so much. It's just, it just has a more bitter flavor. That's typically what you're going to find in your store-bought wheat breads is it's usually made with the red wheat and we're, I'm just not a big fan, never have been, but I love the taste of the, of the white wheat. Love it. And especially since grinding my own flour uh, from, from the wheat berries, uh, I just like the taste of the bread so much better. It's healthier. It doesn't have all the additives in it. So anyway, I talk more about that and then how, how I grind it and stuff. And I have a country living grain mill, which in my personal opinion, now I can't speak for the other ones that I haven't used, but I love my country living grain mill. I highly recommend it to anyone who's willing to invest in something that they know is going to work for them, no matter what their situation, whether they lose power or they're off grid, or they can even uh, build and hook up a motor to it like we did to ours. Uh, I used I love grinding by hand, but my time just be got, got to be more and more valuable. So having Mr. Rain build and hook up that motor that we can just plug into our solar power at any time has really been a huge time saver. But anyway, yeah, the country living in a grain mill can go either way. So anyway, back, back to the subject of the grains and how I store them. So, you know, I didn't think it's important to bring up the fact that I do like to soak them and all, but how do I store them? Now when it comes to storing things like rice and things that I use right away or just white flour, I do use organic white flour for various things as well. Sometimes I like to mix it with my home milled flour. So when I, when I keep it in the kitchen for immediate use, I use recycled coconut oil buckets. Those are really good in my personal opinion. I know they're food grade. They're still plastic, but at least I know they're food grade. And this is the stuff I cycle through a lot quicker. So I want to show you what I got going on here with the white rice. Now, this kind of bucket, this is for immediate use. This is the stuff I keep in the kitchen. I'm using right away. And even then, I'll put these in there and these are bay leaves and some people may have heard of this before but I really make it a point to keep the bay leaves in the bigger buckets now I have various different types of buckets now I have for my grains I'll have buckets that are long-term storage they are in mylar bags so I get the big five gallon mylar bags and then I put them in a large five gallon ten gallon bucket and with a gamma seal lid and in the mylar bag we usually try to get out all the all the oxygen we can we'll throw in a few oxygen absorbers and I just use this flat iron to seal it with it's the only thing it ever gets used for <laughs> it's for your hair but I use it for sealing the bags it makes it really easy once you got your stuff your stuff in there on a couple oxygen absorbers push out as much of the air as you can and then just make sure this is good and hot and then you just seal it and that is how I store my grains and you can see some pictures right here of the 
of the grains in the buckets. Uh, you, all you can see really is the mylar bag inside the bucket and well sealed and all the oxygen is gone and that should last. In fact, those ones have already been in there for a couple of years at least. And those are staying that way. Those should last for many, many years. Those are in our storage outside, but I also keep buckets inside in our pantry room, which is my oldest son's old room has become our pantry now. And I here, here's a picture right here that shows the just a few of my buckets and you can see I've got the you know there there's some various different sizes and inside those buckets some of them will have the mylar bags but mostly I will just take the bag when I open it and stick it right in there because that's the bag I'm working out of so I don't worry so much about it being specially preserved I throw in the bay leaves though now why the bay leaves you may ask and here, by the way, are the bay leaves that I have. This is the Frontier Organic uh, Bay Leaves. I will go ahead and link to these below. This big old bag is going to last forever. I already had it probably for at least two years, and um, I still have tons. But every so often, I get a new bag, throw in a handful of those bay leaves. And that is to help keep out weevils and other kinds of things. And it seems to be doing the trick. Because bugs do not like bay leaves, apparently. So... That is one of the things that I do. And you can see right here in these spelt berries where I scooped them out of the bucket so I could show them to you. You can see that I scooped out a couple of bay leaves while I was at it. That was unintentional, but it happens. Typically, I'll just take them and throw them back in there. So that's how, those are the different methods I store them. So I have the long term that's supposed to be for at least two years and above. And then I have the ones in the bigger buckets that I'm using right away. They're still in gamma sealed uh, buckets but they're not as you know they're not vacuum sealed they're not you know in mylar bags they're just in the bags that they come in and i just work out of it from that one is gone get a new bag and stick it in there now periodically i will cycle through i'll take an old one that's been put up for a while bring that one out and then fill up a new bucket and then put that one away for long-term storage but typically I'll just keep working on the same bucket and keep refilling that one. So I have one like that for my rice. I have one like that for the spelt berries. One like that as far as the one I'm working through for the soft white and one for the hard white. And then, and then I'll have one of each of those as well. At least if not two for in some cases three. I think it, for the hard white wheat berries because I go through those the fastest. I think I might have three of those that are that are put up for long term so I have these varying different buckets depending on how soon they're going to be used now other things I like to do for such as the Samola flour that I use for making my noodles and uh, if you're interested in learning I'll go ahead and post to my first pasta making video right up here and I think that one I was making fettuccine and spaghetti noodles and just showing you a very basic egg noodle pasta but I also have a vegan one out there too and for anyway the specialty flowers I like to put in the mason jars and then vacuum seal them so what you see in here is a paper towel that I laid across the top and that was to help keep the flour from sucking up through there as I was vacuum sealing with my brake bleeder and food saver top and I put these out so you can see these I do have a video just on how to use the brake bleeder and the food saver tops if you're interested I'll go ahead and link to that right up here and I find some good organic non GMO cereals that we like and they're on sale and I stock up on them I like to put them in the half gallon mason jars and then also vacuum seal those in there using the brake bleeder again so that's another way to store grains but again this is just more the specialty stuff the things I don't buy in bulk like when I buy my wheat berries I always buy them in 50 pound bags that goes for the spelt berries the soft white and the hard white wheat berries now the the rice that I'm getting now is the I get at Costco it's an organic rice long grain and I I'm really liking it and that one I think only comes in I think is a 20 pound bag but it's a pretty good deal 
and uh, I actually just order it online. So Costco, if you don't know this, like if, if you're like us and you live too remotely to have a Costco close to you, you can actually order stuff from Costco online without even having a membership. Because we let our membership go years ago. You do end up paying a little bit of a percentage, but when you do the math on some of these things that are important, like you know the rice and 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 the organic sugar, because I get that there too, it's it's a much better deal to do it that way than to buy on Amazon or typically even from your local store you can just get a much better price and it's even worth it it's still a better price paying that five percent because you can get free shipping if you order at least seventy five dollars worth so typically anyone who does a Costco purchase is doing a big purchase anyway whether they be in the store or online so it works out to be really good but anyway that's that's how I get some of my things is through Costco now my hard white wheat berries I get through Honeyville and if I remember I'll try to put a link to those specific berries below they are organic the soft white ones I get from Amazon they're great river milling they're organic and then the spelt berries are also great river milling spelt berries now I did at one time I know there's a lot of people that like to freeze their grains first before they put them up and this is a really good idea because though it has rarely happened to us sometimes you can get in your grains and they're already infested with there's probably already eggs in there from weevils or other, other things like that now it's very rare we ever have problems with weevils but one time I got a a 50 pound bag of spelt berries from glory bee and glory bee's always been pretty good for us however this one batch must have been loaded with weevil eggs thankfully because i was keeping it in a gamma seal bucket even though it was the bucket i was working out of the they never cross they never ended up getting into any of my other buckets of grains and flowers thankfully but as I went along, I started seeing more and more weevils. I tried putting diatomaceous earth in there. I tried, you know, the bay leaves, and nothing was getting rid of them. They just kept populating in there, and it, it was horrible. I ended up having to throw the whole bag out. So freezing your grains when you first get them will kill anything from what I understand. Now, for me, I just don't have the freezer space to put in a big 50-pound bag of of grains and then to put them away like that so it's just again it's rare that was the only time that's ever happened to us but it's something you might want to keep in mind because it was really disappointing to lose a 50 pound bag of spelt berries and spelt berries are more expensive than your standard wheat berries so that's something to look into another thing some people will do is they will put their grains in the jars like this and they'll bake them in the oven for a little bit to kill anything inside them and then they store them in the in the jars now for me uh, it's not worth the space and the jars to store all of my wheat berries like that because I stock up heavily when it comes to wheat berries so I have plenty for making breads uh, pies, pancakes, biscuits, whatever it is that I'm making, even cookies, I rarely do that, but sometimes I might get a wild hair and make, a cook, make some cookies. And so it's important for me to have lots of these grains on hand, both the rice and the wheat berries. So how, you know, for me to store them all in jars like this is just, it would be a pretty big investment in jars and it would take up way too much space for me to do that but it is an option some people will do that with their beans as well now my beans uh, I also store those in buckets the same way I do my grains you know so I have black beans we have kidney beans and uh, and gar garbanzo beans and a couple other kind of beans I know I'm forgetting about uh, green peas split peas things like that now I oh I did want to talk a little bit about oxygen absorbers now I don't use them that much. I only have used them in the things that I know that I want to put away for a long period of time. Other than that, I find them, sometimes it can be tricky finding some that are even any good. And as soon as you open, like I say you buy a big package of them, as soon as you open that package, these things are going to immediately start absorbing oxygen, all of them. 
I don't know why, and maybe there's some out there that you can buy that are individually wrapped, but you've got to keep that in mind. So if you open up your bag and throw, you know, you say you buy a, a bag of 100, 500, whatever it is, and you just open up that bag, you take a few out and put them in a bucket, and then, you know, maybe you just kind of haphazardly close up the bag, or even if you close it up really good, it's still going to be absorbing oxygen so that when you go to use them, they're typically no good. Now, I've heard some people will bake them for a period of time to dry them out. I haven't tried that. I just find it to be, in most cases, an expense and a hassle that just isn't worth it because most of the time they don't really work that good. Now, one of the pictures I showed you of the, the one wheat berries, I could tell that the oxygen absorbers worked really good because they the bag was really tight. I felt it in there. I hadn't checked it in a couple of years and it is tight. It still has a seal and everything's really good in there. And so obviously those ones were good, but I've used them in other cases where nothing, nothing didn't do a bit of good. Did, didn't take any of the oxygen out. And so you got to really kind of shop around it if it's important to you. But most of the time I just don't I don't see it worth it. Again, if you're planning on putting your buckets away though for at least two years or more, then I do recommend going with the oxygen absorbers. Just be shopping around. So maybe there's someone who's watching this video that knows some good oxygen absorbers that they've used that they feel that they can depend on. Uh, go ahead and share below what brand it is that you use. And if I can find a special link that I can put in that, know what it is, and then put it up there, then I'll go ahead and put that in the description box. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate that information because I may be looking to want to buy some for when I cycle through those grains that are out in our shop because eventually I do need to do that. So anyway, I hope you found this video helpful on at least how I store my grains. Everybody's going to have their own personal way of doing it, and it's also going to depend on how much you use your stuff, how you use your stuff, and how, you know, how it works for you as far as storage and your space. So all these things you got to weigh out. There's, I don't believe there's just one right way of doing things. You have to do things according to what works best for you. Now I am going to give you three rules that I think should apply to everyone no matter how you choose to store. And that is, first of all, don't buy anything that you and your family is, are not going to eat. Okay, you got to be able to you know, eat what you store and store what you eat. And also make sure to rotate and be organized. Organization is so incredibly important when it comes to food storage. Know where your stuff is. Me, I don't write notes, but some people keep ledgers. A ledger is a really good idea. I usually do, I just, the way I've got things set up nowadays, I'm usually pretty good at knowing where things are and what I have. But the older I get, I'm thinking that it's probably I probably should go through and write down and keep a ledger of everything that I have because, you know, it can, ha it can happen. We can forget stuff. So just a few pointers on that. And again, I, I recommend checking out other people's food storage videos on how they do grains and stuff and then find which one, which method is going to work best for you in the way that you like to do things. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.